whoa! Hey there, welcome to the computer corner, or as my parents like to call it, it's a nice hobby, but should we be worried about his technology hoarding problem? Okay, yeah, maybe it's true I hoard technology a little bit. I, uh, for example, I still have every iPod I've ever owned. I have this iPod Touch that I got in high school. Uh, still works pretty well. Um, I also have uh, my very first iPod that I got back in like, uh, I want to say fifth grade. Uh, it's the iPod Nano third generation. There's something nice about the sound quality that comes out of these iPods. I don't know, it's, just, it's probably all in my head. Uh, I'm not an audiophile. I've, I'm a person, not an MP3. <laughs> Apple made the third generation iPod Nano in a wide variety of colors. Uh, for example, mine's blue, quite pretty, I say. Uh, but they only made it in two capacities. They have a four gigabyte version and an eight gigabyte version. Uh, that's dumb, I want more storage. I could never fill eight gigabytes. That's eight no. gigabytes? There's some videos going around on YouTube of people upgrading the storage in their iPod classics. Uh, I think the biggest one I've seen was uh, Dankpods putting two terabytes into an iPod classic, which is crazy. It's a massive amount of storage for songs. Uh, but it also made the iPod very unstable because there are lots of uh, other limiting factors. The, probably the worst one is RAM can't handle that many songs in an iPod. And you can do that with the iPod Classic because they have a user replaceable actual hard drive inside of them. So you just take it out and put in an adapter for a more reliable form of storage like a SD cards or flash storage or something like that. Um, but you can't really do it to Apple's smaller iPods because there's no user replaceable disc in here. Or is there? I don't want to hurt my iPod, uh, so I got another one off of eBay. They're really cheap nowadays. This is just a silver four gigabyte iPod. I won't feel bad about opening this one. So we can uh, open it up, uh, see what's inside, see if we can find the disc. Well, that was easy. So this is a four gigabyte uh, flash chip here. Now the idea is to replace that chip with one of these chips. It's a 16 gigabyte flash chip. Now, not only would it quadruple the storage of this iPod, but it would also make the very first ever 16 gigabyte iPod Nano third generation, which is double the maximum storage you could get at retail. I don't know if it's gonna work. There's really only one way to find out and that's just to do it. So uh, let's, let's uh, heat up the soldering iron. Wait a second. I'm terrible at soldering. Why am I even trying to do this? I need to phone a friend. Wesley. Hi. You remember Wesley, right? There's a pipe in here. What do you mean there's a pipe in there? There's a pipe in here. Right, yeah, that Wesley. Jesus. Yeah, it's a little intense, huh? I should not be able to do that. Do what? Just scrape the layer off of the soldering iron. You're not. using good PCBs, that's not an issue. Yeah, this isn't gonna work. The pads, I think, came off. And that's unrecoverable? Based on how small this is, I don't think so. Yeah, I think I probably would have had to remove this with hot air. Possibly. The thing is, there's a coating on it. I don't know what that coating is, because it doesn't look like normal conformal coating. See this? Right there. Whatever this is, it's almost like a... Kind of reminds me of glue. Unless that's just the top layer of the PCB. I don't know, I've never seen anything like this, though. say connect to iTunes, but it's not saying anything. Yeah, that's not too surprising though. I don't know what's stored on that chip. Yeah, I don't know either. Oh! What? Red X. Red X. No backlight though, that's concerning. I can't even see that. Okay, so long story short, Wesley tore off a bunch of likely important pads on the PCB. This is actually a really hard solder job to pull off because everything is just so delicate. 
So I got Wesley a few dead practice boards and another iPod to try and do. Wesley is going to take the other iPod stuff into his company's prototyping lab, uh, which has better equipment in it. I can't go in there and he can't take pictures, so while he's doing that, I figure I could talk a bit about iPod firmware because in the past couple of days, I've learned a lot about iPod firmware. Okay, yeah, back when I recorded that, I thought I understood how iPod firmware worked. Uh, but now I'm older and wiser and uh, kind of understand why a mod like this could never work on an iPod Nano with original firmware. Uh, but before we can talk about all those reasons and how the firmware actually works, we got to get Wesley to do a better job on uh, soldering one of these iPods. Now, I know he said that uh, he would take the iPod into his like lab, uh, but... All right, a little bit of change of plan. Wesley did one of the practice boards at where he works, and uh, he was so confident that he went ahead and just bought equipment, and uh, he's going to do it in his garage. So I'm headed to Appleton again, and uh, you never guess the cheapest way to get to Appleton right now. So Wesley's going to try the at-home method one more time on this practice board. Now one thing that really worries me is that there's, these flash chips are stacked. That's troubling, because this is the first actual 8 gigabyte iPod board I've seen ever. And it does look different from the 4 gig ones. One. It looks like you destroyed the PCB there. Yeah. Okay, don't do that. <laughs> I'll be careful about that. Yeah, but other than that, it seems fine. Nope. No more bridge. But also, no more pad. There's no way there's a pad there. There's something silver up there. Not you anymore. See it? Oh, that's the trace. So we got the red X. I don't know if you can see it, but it's the same red X as the first time. It says the iPod's not, the software for the iPod's not available. It's possible. No, it's like not connecting to the internet. Okay, so it still doesn't work. Now, you might be asking yourself, why? Why doesn't it work? And what did I try to do to make it work after coming back from Appleton? <laughs> oh, strap in, because it's about to get very technical and very out of my depth very fast. Now, a lot of this information came from a Rockbox port that was uh, started for the third generation Nano. A Rockbox is an alternative firmware for uh, MP3 players like the iPod, but funny for me, the iPod Nano third generation is like one of the least supported Nanos, uh, classic click wheel Nanos at least. Uh, it's kind of funny. So uh, I had to do a lot of my uh, own research into the matter. So when it didn't work, Wesley suggested that it might be the firmware that's checking the NAND chip and making sure that it's a valid chip. Now that's... The iPod has a multi-stage bootloader. Uh, the first part is unchangeable. It's burned onto the S5L8702 CPU chip. And that is responsible for loading up the next stage of the bootloader, which is on the NOR flash chip. Uh, now normally this is Apple code, but uh, someone had actually ported the Rockbox bootloader to the uh, iPod Nano 3rd generation, which is great. I was able to compile it and put it on there, which means I can execute whatever code I want. But I'm not sure if that's enough, right? Because Wesley was correct. There is a table of acceptable NAND flash chips that it looks up on boot. Uh, this is so it doesn't have to like ask the chip for its size. I don't even think there is a way to ask the chip for its size. You can only ask for its ID and it looks up in the table the properties of that chip. And if the chip that we installed isn't in that table, then it just fails out, which is what we're seeing. The Rockbox bootloader is actually really cool. It can load the original firmware of the iPod. So I thought maybe I could patch the NAND table, right? So that my chip was in there and it could look it up and read the contents of it correctly. So then the next goal I had was just to read the ID off of the NAND and if I could read the correct ID, then that would be a success. Proof of concept. You can actually communicate with this NAND chip. Everything's fine. If the firmware wasn't so locked down, then this could totally work. The alarming part is that like 10 years ago, there was actually progress on a port. Uh, and it makes sense why progress would slow down, basically stop, because it's like, you know, an old device, no one cares anymore. But 
Even the people who worked on this seem to have disappeared off the face of the earth. I've tried to contact many of them, and it's real weird. I don't want to get conspiratorial here, but I think Tim Apple might be cleaning up loose ends. You know, it's just weird that suddenly all these people are... The hell was that? Is someone out there? Uh, yeah, maybe we should move to an interior room with, uh... With, with no windows. How does that sound? Yeah, let's do that. We're just gonna close that. Sorry for the noise, I got the servers there. Uh, so basically, until there's a Rockbox port for the 3G, there's really not much I can do. I can't rewrite the firmware, and I can't like make my own Rockbox 3G. I'm not that much of a genius, and... Try to hide it from us. They get very clever about that. They try to hide it from us, and we find it. Yep, okay, it's worse than I thought. It's the ghost Steve Jobs. Let's just go ahead and move. You know, let's just go ahead and cower in the bathroom, right? I mean, it's as good a place as any to film, you know? Uh, it's funny, the last time we were in here, I was pretending to kill myself, and now I might actually die. <laughs> uh, you know, it really is my fault. You know, I just flew too close to the sun, I guess. I picked the wrong iPod. I picked the third generation because it's the one I owned, and, you know, it just had to be the least supportive one. Why couldn't I have just picked another one and... Looks like I edited myself into a corner again. <laughs> I filmed that thinking this mod would be easier on a second generation Nano. It's not. I want to end part one of this video here. It's been over a year since I've started this project. I'm going to go over what I've achieved so far and where I am software wise and what the next steps are. First off, I've made a Discord server for iPod Nano hacks if you're interested in joining. If you know anything about this kind of stuff, please, please reach out to me because in most cases, I don't even know what to Google. If you're doing your own iPod Nano hack, feel free to join and get help on your own project there too. I'm hoping to build a community of iPod Nano modders and hackers so we can share our collective knowledge before it all ends up as dead links on the internet. At this point, I'm not the only one attempting to do this mod. Someone else started an effort to do this as well, and I've joined their project on Hackaday. Although I am willing to bet that I've gotten farther than many in understanding the complexities of this problem. I'm to the point now where I understand most of the layers of the iPod EFI firmware and how to patch them and bend them to my will. Almost all of them. Here, let me explain. I've separated my project into three goals, uh, each one harder than the last. The first goal was to confirm that the NAND chip could actually be talked to. Uh, the second is to read and write from the chip. And uh, the third one is to patch the disk mode binary so we can at least use it as a flash drive. Uh, the uber mega stretch goal being to patch the iPod's operating system so it works as well. The first goal was met back in October, I think? Uh, I mentioned before that I tried to patch the NAND table so it would recognize my chip. Uh, I had to go beyond that. I'm now patching instructions in the code so that I can modify the behavior of the NAND driver in the EFI. A proof of concept was reached when I was able to read the NAND chip's ID and put it where the size of the chip is supposed to go in the, uh, in the diagnostic menu. If you want more info about how I did this, uh, you can join the Discord server, we can chat about it. Hey, shameless plug. So now when the iPod goes to read the chip, it just gets a bunch of Fs back. Uh, this either means that reading works and writing fails uh, because NAND chips are initialized to all Fs in the factory, or that both steps are failing and we're seeing the default fail state of the Fmis layer. All I know is that before we read, the buffer is filled with all zeros, and after we read, the buffer is all Fs, which is kind of how this project is making me feel. Now the Fmis layer is a layer that's built right into the S5L8702 processor and has been driving me nuts. If there is a reason this project will never work, it's this layer's fault. It's an undocumented state machine and runs this weird bytecode of sorts that I don't fully understand. I've guessed that what about half of it does, but I can't really be sure. So I think I'm at the end of the road when it comes to things I can try in software. Uh, for the next part of this video, I'm going to do uh, signal level debugging to see what the FMIS layer is actually writing to the chip because, again, it's able to communicate with it and get the chip's ID back, but I think something is wrong with how the chip is being addressed. So my plan is to make a really pretty iPod breakout with the ribbon cables and sockets so I can better test this sort of thing while probing the signals of the logic analyzer, because that's how desperate I am now. So why don't you get subscribed so in, I don't know, a year when I post the next part, you'll get notified.
I'll stream some of the hardware debugging side of this on Twitch. So if you're interested in that, you can go ahead and follow me there. Uh, the first step is designing the PCB, which I have absolutely no experience with. So uh, you can come on down and roast the hell out of me. So I guess that about does it for part one. Yeah, I mean, this kind of exploded into a project that was just way, way above my pay grade. Uh, but I will win. I won't surrender so easily. I'm just in too deep. Join my Discord if you know NAND things. Uh, follow my Twitch if you want to see me embarrass myself with embedded electronics. Subscribe if you're a human, and end my suffering if you're merciful.